they finally did it. They finally fucking did it. The impossible has been achieved. There is an anime out there that is almost fully CGI graphics, and it's good. It's all good. It's not the case of it having an interesting story and subpar visuals, but it has an interesting good story and visuals that can be considered good, if not great, in certain scenes. I- oh! Okay. It's actually happened, people. I mean, the standard to beat before was Cato the Right Answer, and while it had an interesting start, that thing crashed and burned so hard with, like, mid-season reveal that one of the characters was an alien all along, and then it jumping the shark so fucking hard it achieved interstellar travel. But yeah, it's finally been done. Someone's made a good, almost fully CGI anime, and the name of that anime is Land of the Lustrous, so let's... Let's talk about that for a bit. So Land of the Lustrous is an anime that came out a little bit into, um, I want to say, not quite halfway into 2017. And I remember watching the first episode and thinking, yeah, this isn't for me. This seems to be just a cutesy anime, you know, cutesy slice of life anime with some minor action, you know, beats. And I dropped it. But then I got a tweet from one of my favorite artists of Monster Girl Variety on Twitter saying that she loved the show and she basically was a big fan and I thought to myself, oh, okay, because I cannot, you know, enjoy things by myself, I need to be first validated by people I look up to, I decided to check out the show again and I, I don't know, I, I, I think I was on drugs or I was just sleep deprived when I first, you know, watched the show that first time. Because holy shit, on looking at it on the second time, I was blown away by the first episode. Like, I don't know what happened because it can't be the sleep deprivation thing because for years now that's just been my default state of existence. And as for the drug things, I have asthma. So if I try to smoke like a leaf of bath salts or whatever the fuck the drug of choice is nowadays, I will most certainly just literally die right then and there. But be that as it may, I ended up watching it again, and I binged the whole thing, I downloaded it to my phone and watched it again, I just, oh, this show, this show is fucking great. I kind of wish I had watched it in 2017, so, like, I could, like, you know, cry out and say, like, this is one of the best anime of that year, and considering the fact that I was going against My Hero Aka and Made in Abyss, that's fucking saying something. Especially since the fact that this is a almost fully CGI anime, as I said before, and the bar to beat there is Cado the right answer. In fact, I'm pretty sure when it comes to fully CGI things, it was Cado the right answer and Berserk, which, yeah, not very high bars to meet, but... Let's, oh god, I hit the microphone. Fuck. <laughs> that's, how I'm, that's, that's how excited I am about this show. Also, I'm a bit sleep-deprived right now, so yeah, my brain's just going all over the place, but let's concentrate. Land of the Lustrous is this show taking place in what appears to be a world which it's described early on that once upon a time, suddenly six moons appeared and, you know, most of all living things fled to the water... And over time in this barren land, a new race of beings, you know, came to be, the titular lustrous of the show. These beings, which number somewhere in the realm of 28, I believe it's said in the series, are these sentient gemstone people. They're not really... They, they don't have a gender. One of the first things that I noticed in the show is that everyone is referred to by non gender specific pronouns. They're referred to as they or their or, you know, just like that. These are sentient, you know, gemstones, so they don't need a gender. But there are these 28 or so sentient gemstones, and they all live in this compound being mentored and cared for by this person that is simply referred to sen by sen uh, Sensei, which he himself does not appear to be one of these said gemstones, but instead appears to be almost a human, 
But this turns out that this is probably not the case, because as we later learned, as sentient gemstone people, they are immortal. Like, the main character, the youngest of all of these lustrous, is this girl named Phosphalite, I believe is how her name is pronounced. And she is 300 years old, and the oldest of them is, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere around 3,000 years old. So obviously, this sensei character can't be a human. Though in the show's defense, he does appear to have some form of magic ability, so this might have increased his longevity beyond the traditional human lifespan. So in the first episode, we are introduced to Phosphalite, our main character, who is found by two of her older sisters who are on the lookout for Lunarians, the main antagonist of this series. And can I just say, I love the design of the Lunarians. Every time they appear, this almost Rorschach test-like blot appears in the sky and then bubbles over into these ominous clouds on which they stand on. They are like these uh, one t color tone creatures who seem to look like, um, I don't know, they look like these otherworldly, almost divine beings who seemingly hunt down the lustrous, we are told to make jewelry, but are shown instead that they seem to be turning them into weapons to hunt them down, as we see from the fact that they are firing these arrows made from one of the lustrous that they had captured before the series began. After they are defeated in a rather well animated and fluid and for fuck's sake. Okay, as I was saying, in a rather fluid and quite frankly well animated and actually pretty exciting fight. We are then learn a bit more about our main character, how she is a bit flaky and a bit the basic anime protagonist who is has no seemingly discernible talents at first glance, and is basically the butt monkey and seen as the weakest of all of the characters in the show, to the point where the sensei getting mad and yelling is enough to cause her to basically crumble to literal pieces. It is there where we are given a bit more information about the these creatures known as the lustrous. Since they are made out of gemstones, they are in fact pretty much immortal, to the fact where one of them is pointed out to be 3,000 years old. And as long as all the parts are gathered together, or as we learn later on in the series, if materials of similar composition are gathered, the characters can actually just be put back together and they will continue living as if nothing had happened. But this does not mean that there is no stakes nor any danger to the characters. If these parts are lost forever or rendered in some way unfixable, then they will lose the memories associated with that part. As it turns out, since the characters are made completely out of crystal and they have no internal organs or such, every single part of their body is responsible for holding their memories. So if, say, a character gets a leg cut off, or rendered completely useless, as we will see as possible in this first episode, then, if, once that part is removed, they will lose any memory stored in those parts. Which becomes a, quite frankly, bit of a central plot point and sort of theme in the show later on. But as I say, after the main character, who is nicknamed Fos, is put back together, she is called into the sensei's room where he tells her that he finally has a job for her. Because she was so weak and she had no aptitude for any of the other jobs, he has decided that she is to compile an encyclopedia of all past and present knowledge. Of which the character Fos, who loves in life, seem to be lazing about and doing nothing, and dreaming about how much of a great warrior she could be if she was given a chance is something that she most definitively wants nothing to do with. So she is just lazes around the whole episode until she is directed to ask a character, Cinnabar, about what she might have seen on her night patrols. See, Cinnabar is this rather interesting character, which we are introduced to. She is the only of the lustrous who ever patrols at night because Lunarians have never appeared there. 
At first it's thought perhaps that it is because Lunarians never appear at night, but then it turns out it might be because the only one of the Lustrous who is ever out is Cinnabar herself. You see, Cinnabar is blessed with, well, I wouldn't say blessed, it's more she is cursed with power. What I mean to say is that Cinnabar is the single of the weakest structural-wise of the character, as in her actual crystalline structure. She is the easiest to shatter, but to offset this, she has the ability to generate this seemingly amazingly potent poison. The problem with this, though, is that she cannot turn off this power, and seeing as this poison seems to render the land and life around her sterile for decades on end, and if a fellow member of the Lustrous touches this poison, it'll actually render any crystal that comes in contact with it inert and useless, meaning that they'll have to scrape it and chip it off. Which becomes rather horrifying when you realize that not only are they simply chipping off a few layers of skin, but they are literally removing memories that can never be gained back afterwards. So as a result, she has sort of been exiled out of the compound and out of living daily life, and being unable to do anything except patrol at night. It's the first clue to the viewers that not everything is as it seems in this world, and it's not just this gonna be this plucky, almost magical girl style monster of the week show. She is a character that is quite frankly at odds with the almost carefree nature of all of these lustrous, and it's just... From what seemed like it was going to be, as I said earlier, a slice of life monster of the week sort of show, this character immediately catches the interest and just lets the Imagine run wild with how out of left field she is. I also feel like she is a bit of a hint of things to come. As the series goes on, it gets noticeably darker and more grim. Not to the point of, say, Made of Abyss, and while there is a sort of wham episode where shit gets real, it doesn't go into the depression, grimness spiral of post-episode 3 Madoka. There is a change and a grimness that becomes more and more apparent as the show goes on, but it still has its points of levity and humor that amused me into smiling openly while the show went on. Another thing this show does great narratively is the change in Fos herself. She goes from this plucky, good-for-nothing, naive, go-getter anime protagonist and becomes a more world-weary and cynical as the show goes on. It also has one of the best physical transformations in a protagonist as this show goes on that I have ever seen outside of Edward Elric in Full Metal Brotherhood. And if you know what I'm talking about, Edward changes extensively during that series. So yeah, the story behind this show is pretty darn good, but what about the visuals? Well, this show, it looks phenomenal. Not to the technically impressive level of, say, something like Gantt Zero, but it just, the art style and the animation is done in such a way that while it evokes anime-like feelings, it doesn't have the sort of uncanny valley effect that a lot of shows that try to go for the full anime look have achieved when doing CGI. Like, there are scenes that look nothing short of beautiful and breathtaking in a way only seen in some of the best and most well-animated and funded anime out there. This show looks phenomenal when it wants to, and the few times it doesn't are the times when they switch to more traditional animation which thankfully is few and far between, and usually only lasts a few seconds at most. Land of the Lustrous is a phenomenal show, it's fantastic, and I wholly recommend it to anyone who's interested in something with a good mixture of action and sort of intrigue slash mystery to its world. You can find it on Anime Strike, well, you can find it on Amazon Prime Video because Anime Strike is effectively dead as of now. So, yeah, it's behind the two 
you know, the two-way paywall, but if you want to wait a bit, you'll probably be able to get it just with traditional Amazon Prime. And since Amazon isn't seemingly licensing out any anime, it's very possible that if there is a season two, and considering this ends on one of the most obvious sequel hooks ever, I do so hope there is a season two, you'll probably be able to find it on different platforms. But if you're willing to take the two you know, paywall hit, or if you still have the uh, few, you know, I believe it's a 7 or 14 day trial, then I highly recommend you take it just to watch this show. It's just, oh, I love this show. Anyways, that's been my thoughts and opinions on Land of the Lustrous. If you like this video, like it. If you disliked it, there's a button for that too. Comment, subscribe, ring the bell. Be sure to check out my website, which I definitely will be updating once this you know, episode rolls out, and be sure to check out my Let's Play channel where I'm currently Let's Playing Persona 5, and be sure to check out, you know, my Twitter for just, uh, you know, I just put up a tweet every time I upload a video, and hopefully I'll start tweeting some more soon. And as I said, I have a website which I will totally start updating once more, as well as a Patreon, so if you like this content for whatever reason, then be sure to check it out. Alright, my name has been Juan John John. This has been my opinions on Land of the Lustrous. I shall see you all later. Goodbye.